So we can imagine the kind of association uh, that Hanuman got with Lord Ramachandra and the way he must have served the Lord. So Prahlad, very lovingly, he began to glorify Hanuman. He said, my dear Narada Manu, Hanuman is actually so glorious. And Hanuman, he is the most powerful person. And when he was just a child, when he was just a baby, all the greatest of the demigods, they appeared in front of him and they offered him so many wonderful benedictions. So much so that Hanuman became even immune to old age and death. So there is a story in the Uttarakhanda of Ramayana uh, that describes the childhood exploits of Hanuman. He was a very, very, very sweet child. So once upon a time, uh, in Kishkinda, there was a very great Manara king by the name Kesari, and his wife was the most celebrated Anjana Devi. So Anjana Devi prayed to have a nice son, and by the mercy of the wind girl Vayudev, she was impregnated, and she gave birth to Hanuman. So Hanuman was a very, very sweet, but a very mischievous kid, and he was always hungry. So once he was very, very, very hungry and he looked up into the sky and he saw the sun. So when he saw the sun, he mistook the sun for a delicious red colored fruit. So that is what Hanuman thought when he saw the sun. He mistook the sun for a very nice delicious red fruit and he jumped up into the sky and soared up, chasing after the sun. So as he was driving up and he was nearing the sun, the wind god, he saw his little son jumping up and he thought he must give protection to his son. So the wind god saw this and he covered him with a cool breeze to give him protection and prevent him from being scorched by the sun's rays. So it's interesting that incidentally that day was a day of solar day. So we know at the time of solar eclipse, Rahu is scheduled to come and swallow up the sun. Or rather, you can say cover up the sun. So Rahu, he came there right on time to go and cover the sun. But then as he was going there to do his service, he saw little Hanuman flying and coming in his way, trying to go towards the sun. So seeing this, Rahu got very scared. He got really, really scared and he ran away from there. And he went and reported this incident to Indra. So he went and told Indra, what is this? At this time, I am supposed to go and I am supposed to go and cover the sun. This time is allotted for me. I am Mr. Rahu. I have the right to cover the sun at this time. I call the eclipse. But then I see another Rahu going towards the sun. So have you given my post to anyone else? What's happening here? At that time, when Indra heard this, he was totally confused. He didn't understand a word what Rahu was trying to tell him. And actually, he was in awe when he heard this report. So, immediately he sprang up from his seat and at once he mounted on his elephant Airavata and keeping Rahu in front of him, he started proceeding towards the sun to see who had come to swallow the sun. So, meanwhile, what happened was, as they were going there, Rahu was in the front of Indra, right? But Rahu was very, very angry. He was so agitated. So leaving Indra behind, Rahu started off in full speed. And he flew like a huge peak of mountain near the spot where Hanuman was trying to get to the sun. So now, as Rahu was approaching you know, Hanuman and the sun like this, Hanuman's attention was diverted. So this baby, this little Hanuman, he saw another new flying fruit. So he thought Rahu is another fruit. And very innocently, he left the old fruit, which is the sun, and he began to run behind this new flying fruit. So Hanuman was thinking that this fruit is even more interesting. It's in motion, it's like a rolling ball. Uh, so this was Rahu, and he wanted to go and catch Rahu and eat up Rahu. So he began chasing Rahu. Now Rahu was super, super terrified. He ran away for his life, shouting out to Indra to help. And he went running to Indra and he told him, Indra, Indra, please save me, please save me. So when Rahu went to Indra, Indra said, okay, don't worry, Rahu, I will protect you. 
I, I, I see what's happening, I will take. So Indra marched forward. Now, Hanuman, he now saw Indra riding on Airavata and coming towards him. So Hanuman was first excited because he saw a nice red colored fruit. Then he saw a moving fruit huh, who was trying to come in front of the sun. And now he saw an elephant fruit. He saw Airavata and Hanuman with his childlike innocence. He thought, wow, this is a huge fruit and this is the best fruit I should be eating. So he went behind Airavata trying to catch Airavata. Now seeing Hanuman rushing towards Airavata, Indra immediately took out his thunderbolt and he hurled it at little Hanuman. Now hit by the thunderbolt, Hanuman came crashing down on earth onto a mountain and he fell unconscious and totally confused. And the left side of his jaw was broken because of the impact of Indra's weapon and therefore he came to be known as Hanuman. Hanuman means one whose jaw is actually broken. That is the name of Hanuman. So anyway, seeing his uh, little son like this injured and fallen down, Vayudeva appeared there and he was so angry. He was so angry that his child, his little baby was hurt that he withdrew his power of air all the values, he withdrew all of them. Now, we all know prana is one. That is when we inhale, prana is one. But as we inhale, prana assumes five forms. Prana, apana, samana, udana, dhyana. This is there in one of the purpose of Srinathar, uh, sorry, in Bhagavad Gita of Srinathar. I believe in the sixth chapter, if I'm not wrong, but it's there in his purpose. So he talks about this. He talks about the five forms of prana. So, all these five forms of prana, they function within the body of living entity. So, when we inhale the air, the air functions in different directions and it performs different actions. So, the five uh, classifications of the air that we take in our body is described here. Now, when prana, when uh, Vayu is uh, he withdrew the air, what happened was all the air in the body of the living entity stopped functioning. He was very, very angry. So he just withdrew his powers and he took his son and he entered with him into a cave. Now when he did that and Bhaji withdrew, everyone felt totally choked up. They couldn't breathe. Their joints became very stiff because you need air within the body for the movement of the joints. So that's why they say when you have uh, arthritis, it's very difficult to move your joints. That means the air within your body is not functioning properly. And they, uh, their joints became stiff. They were not able to pass out any waste from their bodies because you need the air of apana to send out the waste from your body. That air moves downwards. So like that, everything was blocked. They couldn't do anything. Their joints became stiff. They felt totally choked. They were not able to pass out any waves. Everyone was so miserable. It was affecting all the living entities. And at that time, all the demigods who were seeing this, they hurried to Brahma and they told Brahma about the very pitiable condition in which they were, in which all the living entities were. And Brahma, he understood the problem and on his part, he immediately left for the place where Vayudev was in the cave. So Brahma entered the cave and he saw Vayudev was very, very upset. Vayu seeing Brahma paid his obeisances and then Brahma saw Hanuman in the arms of Vayudev. So lovingly, he went towards Hanuman and he stroked the head of little Hanuman and immediately, Hanuman came back to full life. Just like how a crop that has almost dried out without any rain suddenly comes back to life when it is water. Like that, Hanuman came back to life. So seeing that his son was back in full life, Ayurveda again began circulating himself internally within all living entities and there was a big relief in the universe. So Brahma, he then requested all the demigods who had come there 
to confer blessings on this little child. Uh, and he told them that this little child will help them in the future to destroy their enemies by the killing Ravana. Because Ravana would be enemy of all the demigods. So therefore, Brahma requested all the demigods to come forward and confer blessings on the little child. So at that time, all the demigods, they went forward to bless this, this uh, little child. Indra placed a garland of lotuses on him and blessed this child and said, since my thunder bolt actually broke his chin, thereafter he will be known as Hanuman. And my thunder bolt can never harm him any after. Then the sun god came and he told him, this child will obtain 100 part of my brilliance and when time comes, I will become his guru and I will teach him all the shastras. He will become very learned. And no one can match him in his speech or his knowledge of scriptures. Then Varuna blessed him, saying that he will not have death in my waters, or my noose will never harm him. Yamaraj came forward and he said, This boy will have a very, very long life, and my danda, my danda of punishment will never harm him. He'll be completely free of disease. Then Kubera said, My maze will not affect him. And he will never become tired in the battlefield. We all know the battle of uh, Ram Ramana, where uh, Hanuman was never ever tired. So this was a boon that was given to him. Then Narshiva said he will be immune from death by me and my weapons. Similarly, Vishwakarma also said he will also have a very long life and he will be immune from my Like that, all the demigods came and they gave some beautiful blessings to Hanuman and him, that's why Kamala says in the statement that Hanuman was completely immune to any disease or old age and he was very, very powerful and he served Lord Ramachandra Sukhya because he was blessed like this by so many demigods. And even Brahma blessed him. Brahma blessed him with a very long life and said that he will be immune to the weapon of Brahma, which is the Brahmastra. He'll be able to change his form at will and he'll be able to go to all the places at the speed of light. His movement will never be impeded and he will be a crucial instrument in pleasing Lord Ram and King Ram. So that's why we see even the Brahmastra didn't have any effect on Hanuman during the war and Hanuman was able to change his form at his will and he would go to all the places at the speed of light. So, so many benedictions by all these demigods. So, like that, Prahla said, Man is very special. He got so many benedictions from all the demigods. Then Prahla said, Hanuman not only received so many benedictions, but also he's actually very free from all fear. He doesn't get scared. And he maintains very good, strong vows. He maintains great vows. And he performs all kinds of auspicious deeds. And he is an outstanding hero. And he is an exceptional servant of the Lord. So, among all the vows that Hanuman has taken, the greatest of his vows is a strict celibacy. He was a very, very strict Brahmachari. Actually, we see in the Valmiki Ramayan, uh, that Sugriva, Sugriva, uh, a very long break during the rainy season. He took a very long break during the rainy season. Uh, and he did not make any preparations for the search of Sita. Actually, when Ram went and requested help from Sugriva, at that time Sugriva promised to help. But then the rainy season had come. And uh, he didn't make, uh, you know, he took a long break. And after the break was over also, he didn't take efforts to make preparation for the search of Sita. So at that time, Lakshmana got very angry with Sugriva. And he went to warn Sugriva, who was spending all his time and sensual pleasures. So at that time, Tara stepped out and she told Lakshmana that the Vanaras in general are very prone to sense gratification. Monkeys are prone to sense gratification. Everyone knows that. It is very, very difficult for them to take away their mind from such desires. And it is only natural for them to indulge in sensual pleasures. So Sugriva was enjoying sense gratification. 
But then Tara said, you know, now he will get ready. He will come and he will search for Sita. Okay, that was the situation of the Vanada. But then we see Hanuman, in spite of his bodily condition, he was very determined and he was a celibate. He never ever, uh, we don't uh, hear of Hanuman, you know, uh, indulging in family life or something like that. He was a celibate Brahmacharya. So not only did he take very strict celibate vows, his auspicious deeds include that he thoroughly studied all the Vedic literatures and he acquired very good skills as a poet. So whom did Hanuman study under? Hanuman learned scriptures from his guru who was Surya Dev. Remember, Surya gave this benediction to him. So Surya Dev, according to the Srimad Bhagavatam, fifth canto, he is always moving. This is described in the 21st chapter of the fifth canto. Surya is always moving. He moves on the Manasotara mountain on a golden chariot which has just one wheel and he's pulled by seven horses who are named after the different Sanskrit metrical patterns, Chandas, Megaitri, Anushto, Trisho, Pankti. All these are the name of the horses of Surya Dev. And his charioteer is Aruna. So, Surya is always moving and staying in front of the sun god and offering prayers are 60,000 sages known as Balakindas. They are the size of a thumb and they are constantly offering prayers. And there are 14 Gandharvas, Apsaras and other demigods who are divided into seven parties and they perform ritualistic activities every month and they worship the super soul through the sun god according to different names. So this is the description of how Surya is situated and how he is constantly moving and how he is always accompanied by a huge entourage. Okay. So now, Surya is moving. When Hanuman desired to learn from the sun god, the sun god told him, I can teach you, I can teach you, but I have to constantly move. I cannot stay in one place. So how will you learn? So at that time, Hanuman told the sun god that he will face Surya Dev and he will keep moving backwards and learn something. So, uh, Surya accepted Hanuman as his disciple and he was an exceptional student. Hanuman was simply exceptional. He learned everything perfectly from Surya Dev. And uh, because of that, because of his training that he received from Surya Dev, Hanuman became an expert in all scriptures and in fact he was celebrated as Navadhyakarana Pandita. That means an expert in all nine forms of grammar and Sanskrit. He was a perfect pundit. He was a perfect poet and he was a very fine grammarian. He knew everything. So in fact, Lord Ramachandra himself acknowledged that and praised him for this. So there is a very beautiful pastime that describes the expertise of Hanuman and how Lord Ram was impressed uh, listening to Hanuman. So during the very first meeting of Lord Ram and Hanuman, uh, you know, uh, uh, this meeting was actually very, very special. And it's described very beautifully in the Ramayana. So we see that in that past time, that, that Lord Ram himself was totally amazed by the perfection in the speaking skill that Hanuman had possessed. Uh, had possessed. Uh, the first meeting of Hanuman and Ram is very interesting. We all know Lord Ramachandra was banished to the forest and eventually Sita Devi was kidnapped by Ravana. So at that time, Ram and Lakshman, they went towards the southern direction trying to find Sita. And after meeting Shabari in Matanga Rishi Ashram, they headed towards the Rishyamukha Parva to find Sugriva. So at that time, Sugriva along with Hanuman and few of his other personal associates, they were living in Rishyamukha Parva in fear of Vali. Vali was the brother of Sugriva. So they were, uh, you know, actually banned from entering the kingdom. So they were living outside and they were specifically living in this place called as Rishyamukha Parvat, where Bali wouldn't come. There are a lot of stories around it. We will not get into it. But anyway, we will ju we'll just see that Sudriva was living with Hanuman and a few of his associates in Rishyamukha. So when Lord Ram and Lakshman were going towards this mountain to find Sugriva and develop friendship with him, that time what happened was Sukriva noticed that two humans were approaching 
approaching Rishyamukhapan. So seeing that Sugriva got scared, he said, he called Hanuman and he told Hanuman, I see two people. These two people have long lengthy arms, they have broad beautiful eyes and they appear to be carrying bows and arrows and swords. They look like the sons of some gods. So I'm very, very scared. I presume that these two people are sent by Bali to assault me. I believe that's why they have come here. Bali has so many friends. Uh, he has sent some of his allies. And I somehow think these are his allies and trusting them is not good. So Sukriva was in constant fear of Bali. And Sukriva told Hanuman, please go in disguise. Don't go like this. You go in disguise, go and talk to them and find out who they are and what their intentions are. And if you get any indication that they were sent by Bali, immediately turn towards me and give me a signal, I will get alert and alert. So this is what Sugriva told Hanuman. So ordered like this by Sugriva, Hanuman made up his mind to go there. So Hanuman, he then jumped off from the mountain of Rishimukha and casting off his monkey-like appearance, Hanuman dressed up like a renunciant, like a mendicant. Huh? Says Bhikshu, that means he is like a mendicant. Huh? So he dressed up like that and he went uh, towards Ram and Lakshman who were actually walking towards Rishimukha. Now Sugriva thought that nobody will tell a lie to an aesthetic, you know, um, you know like a, a mendicant, who is going to lie to a mendicant? If he's coming like that, one Brahmin old mendicant has come, who will go and lie to him? So that's the thought that Sugriva had. So Sugriva specifically told Hanuman to dress up like that, to take that form, so that he could get maximum information from the two brothers. So he asked Hanuman to change his form. So like that, Hanuman changed his form and he walked towards Ram and Lakshman and his heart, as he was walking towards Ram and Lakshman, became more and more and more heavy in the love that he had for Ram and Lakshman as he was saying that. Then Hanuman neared Ram and Lakshman and instantaneously, when he saw them close, he just prayed away from this. And in a very sweet and pleasing voice, he began to speak. So he greeted them and he praised the two brothers. This is where you know, he, uh, he exhibited his skills of speech. So he began telling them, you two look so beautiful. You look like kingly saints. You have beautiful bodies and perfect complexions. How come you have arrived at this countryside? You are scaring all the herds of animals and all the inhabitants in this forest. You both look so splendid. You're dressed like renunciants wearing tree bars. But you also have strong, mighty shoulders. So who are you? I see that you are wielding bows and you have arms like elephant trunks. You are broad chested. You have eyes like lotus petals. What brings you here? So like this Hanuman who was in disguise went on and on and on praising them for their beauty and their looks and their presence. And he asked them their identity. So like this when Hanuman was talking, Ram and Lakshmana, they were remaining silent. They were just watching him. And Hanuman, after a point in time, he was so vexed with their silence and he didn't know what to do. So far, he had been talking all flattering words and all the sentences, the way he spoke, everything was actually drawn from scriptures. That is, uh, he quoted, you know, it says that he quoted from scriptures like Lakshana Shastra that talk about the form and the beauty of great kings, great emperors. So like that, very, very nicely, in a very poetic way, he was describing the beauty of Ram and Lakshman. Like that, when he was talking in Len, the other two listeners, Ram and Lakshman, they were not replying to anything that he was asking. They were just assessing him all the time. Because they were assessing him, because they were thinking, who is this? In the middle of this unpopulated thick forest, one random mendicant has come and he's talking at Len. That took perfectly, without a single mistake. Huh? Without a single grammar mistake or without a single mistake in sentence formation. And that was he's picking all these choice of verses from scriptures. He's speaking perfect Sanskrit and his words are so poetic. So they were just observing him and they were totally perplexed. So 
they thought uh, that this particular person who's questioning us is definitely not any mendicant or any sage. Because if he is a mendicant, why should he be roaming in deep forests? Rather, he should be in around some villages where he will get some charity, right? So, and another thing is generally, mendicants are usually silent. You know? they, are, they have given up everything. They just, go and, they just go and sit in one place and they generally don't talk to the public. Or they don't go by themselves and start conversation with others. They don't speak much. But then this particular person is speaking so much, so it appears that he's got some purpose behind him. So Hanuman was actually almost pestering them. He wanted to know their identity. After every, every few sentences, he kept asking their identity. Who are you? You're so beautiful. Who are you? Why have you come here? Then like he tried to ask so many questions. So he wanted to desperately know the identity of these intruders. So anyway, Ram and Lakshman, they were simply listening and they were just looking at him and simply assessing him. Then Hanuman said, I've been talking to you all this time, but why are you both not speaking anything? Why are you both not speaking anything? And Hanuman, he could no longer keep quiet and he immediately blurted out. He said, there is one worthy Vanara by the name Sugriva. He has been rejected by his brother Bali and he is roaming around the world very sorrowfully. And Hanuman immediately said, Ragnya Vanara Mukhya Nam Hanuman Nama Vanara. Delegated by that Sugriva, the king of monkeys, I have come here and my name is Hanuman and I am a Vanara. So he said, I am a Vanara, my name is Hanuman. Just think, he is gone in a dress. Huh? That is like a mendicant. He has gone in distress because he doesn't want to reveal his identity. But when he saw the Lord, he blurted out the truth. He didn't say, I am a mendicant and he didn't say any lie. He just said, I am Hanuman, I am a Vanara, I am the minister of Sugriva who has been rejected by Vali. This is my identity. So he said that. So after all this effort of disguising himself, he goes and he introduces himself as a Vanara Hanuman. Why? Because when a devotee stands in front of the Supreme Lord, who is the Paramatma in all our hearts, who is the super soul who is God everywhere within each and every atom, who is there within each and every living entity, and who is the very Lord of his heart, the devotee cannot lie. So Hanuman could no longer conceal himself. After speaking like this, all his eloquent, fine speech, he felt silent after introducing himself. So hearing these beautiful words of Hanuman, actually Lord Ram became very impressed. He looked at his brother Lakshman and told him, My dear brother, this minister of Sugriva, his speech is so fine, he's so eloquent, he's so scholarly. Even the knower of Rig Veda, an expert in Yajur Veda, a scholar of the Sama Veda, cannot speak like the way he is speaking. His grammar is very good. He has learned everything very comprehensively. Not a single word he spoke was out of context. On his face, his eyes, his forehead, his eyebrows, all the faculties of expression on the face, if you observe it, there is no fault. Whatever he was speaking, the expressions were perfect. It was matching to his speech. He was speaking to the point without any hesitation, without any breaks, without any delay in the spacing of the words. The sentence formation was perfect. When he speaks, it's coming out from his chest and throat in a medium tone. He has orderly refinement in speech and that is simply remarkable. He speaks without any incoherence. Uh, that is delay between words. And he speaks appropriately and he speaks words that are pleasing to the heart. The speech is generated in three places, the chest, the head and the throat. And it resonates so wonderfully. So beautiful is the speech that even an enemy's heart will melt if he listens to the speech of Hanuman. If a king has a minister like Hanuman, his mission will be easily accomplished. So this is how Lord Ramchandra praised Hanuman. So Hanuman was praised by the words of the Lord. Imagine that's a very big thing. Hanuman was praised by the words of the Lord. The Lord himself personally praised him and endorsed him for his scholarship, his fine speech and his intellect. So that's why Prahalad says he had all these special qualities, Hanuman. 
Anuman was an expert. He was an expert in his speech and his scholarship as well. And then his heroism. So Hanuman proved his heroism in the battle with Ravana. When he burned down Lanka before that, he proved his heroism. In fact, he was a hero in every sense of the word. A hero, according to Bharatamuni, he quotes, uh, he quotes, Dhanaviram Dharmaviram Yuddhaviram Tataivacha Rasamviram Matitraha Brahma Trividam Evahi. This was given by Sanatana Goswami in his commentary and seen it from the commentary. Lord Brahma has described three kinds of Veera of a hero. A hero in charity, a hero in religion, and a hero in battle. So a, a hero is actually uh, uh, not only a hero in the battle, but a, hero, a true hero is a hero who is a hero in charity, who is a hero in religion, and who is also a hero in battle. And of course there is also a mood of personal reciprocation called a Veera or heroism. And Hanuman was a hero in all respects. He was a hero in each and every sense of the word Veera can mean. So that was Hanuman. So praising his heroism, Prahlad said, I can tell you, you know, Hanuman was so capable. He jumped across the ocean so playfully, very jolly, you know, in a very jolly way. He just jumped across the ocean and very expertly he went and he consoled Sita Devi. Nobody can console Sita Devi like the way Hanuman did. He was an expert. He just spoke so beautifully and he relieved her from all the distress that she had. And remember, when Hanuman went and spoke to Sita Devi, it was a very crucial moment because Sita was about to commit suicide. That's when Hanuman actually spoke. So Prahlad remembers that. And Prahlad says, he exhibited his heroism when he jumped across the ocean and he exhibited his speaking skills when he consoled Sita Devi. So we'll see about Haruman jumping across the ocean today. And then we may have to stop because this is a huge portion. So consoling Sita Devi will see in our next session. So anyway, we'll talk about Haruman jumping the ocean. So Haruman, we saw in his early childhood that he was a very mischievous kid and he had so many benedictions from all the demigods. So what happened was, Hanuman, as he was growing up after all these benedictions, he became extremely mischievous because of the, he had so much strength. On the strength of all the benedictions that he had received from these demigods, his plans were totally out of control. And it so happened that he was cursed by some of the sages that he would forget his powers until he was reminded about them. So in the Ramayana, when the Vanaras went in search of Sita, the group of Vanaras that went south, uh, the southern group, there was Hanuman, there was Jambavan, there was Angara and others. So when the southern group was near the ocean, at that time, they met with Sampati. Sampati was the brother of Jatai. So this Sampati, he could see uh, things at a distant place. So Sampati could visualize Sita as being in the island of Lanka. So when Sampati told this news to the Vanaras, the Vanaras became very, very happy and they began discussing among themselves who would be the right person to cross the ocean and go and see Sita. So at that time, each Vanara was telling how much he can cross. But Jambavan, he reminded Hanuman about Hanuman's power. So till now, Hanuman didn't know about his power because he was close to forget it. But then Jambavan reminded Hanuman about his power and after he was reminded, Hanuman agreed to jump across the ocean. So now all the Vanaras became very, very happy because Hanuman said, yes, I can jump the entire ocean and I can get back also. So all the Vanaras became extremely happy and Hanuman got ready to jump off from the Mahendra Giri Parva. So he swiftly climbed this rocky mountain and he reached a stop. Hanuman took position and he prayed to the Lord, keeping the Lord Ram in his heart. He chanted Jai Shri Ram and on your mark get set go. Hanuman flew high into the sky with great vigor. He looked like a rocket taking off. So like that, he flew up with full force and as he was flying, all the plants, the rocks, the few branches, that was around him, they all flew up with him for a distance to send him off. Just like how relatives would follow their loved ones when they are going on a journey, 
or like soldiers who would march after their chief. Like that, the flowers from the different trees were actually set in motion by the wind that came from the movement of Hanuman. So all these flowers rose up, they worshipped his lotus feet, and then they fell down into the ocean. And the entire ocean was decorated with these beautiful flowers that were just taken off from this uh, Mahindra Giri. And the whole ocean was looking like a sky filled with stars. So Hanuman also, while he took off like this into the clouds, his body was also decorated with all these beautiful flowers and he was looking so beautiful in the sky. Hanuman spread out his arms wide and his shadow that was seen in the ocean below, it looked like a huge boat that was traversing in the ocean. The shadow was almost 10 yojanas wide and 30 yojanas in length. It was so beautiful to look at. And Hanuman was very determined in his mission. He was very, you know, just like how Lord, Lord Ram's arrow uh, never fails. Similarly, Hanuman was steadfast in his mission and he was completely determined to be successful and somehow go and see Sita Devi. And while he was flying like this so beautifully with so much determination in his mind, he met demons on his way and he outwitted them and very easily he reached the city of Mount. So, Hanuman faced three obstacles. One obstacle was forced out of love by Mainaka. Mainaka was a mountain, you know, ocean mountain that rose. Okay? So the first obstacle was forced out of love by Mainaka. The second obstacle was sent by demigods in the form of Surasa, the mother of the Nagas. And the third one was a big obstacle. It was a purposeful hindrance. Yes? So now we will see each of these. When the Mainaka mountain rose and requested Hanuman to rest, there was a mountain by the name Mainaka in the middle of the ocean. He rose and he requested Hanuman to rest because he wanted to favor Vayu's son. So he asked Hanuman to rest. At that time, Hanuman very politely he refused and he told Mainaka that he will accept the hospitality later because he was on a mission. So with a very grateful and respectful heart, Hanuman, what did he do? He touched the mountain with his hand as if accepting the mountain's hospitality and with a smile he flew up with great speed. So Hanuman at that time, he did not want to waste a single second. This is a very important lesson. Time is very, very precious. Even in today's early morning chapters, they were talking about Kana, time. So it is very, very precious. Even one moment lost cannot be got. That time is very precious. He was engaging his time in the service of the Lord and the best, and he wanted to make the best use of time. So he didn't want to waste a second, you know, taking hospitality and wasting his time by enjoying the comfort in Manaka. So he was a perfection of the mood of Dasirasa. Shri Prabhupada and all the Goswamis, we all hear about them. They hardly slept because they were so enthusiastic to serve the Lord. They didn't want to waste a moment or a little moment. So this is how Hanuman was. Then the next obstacle was an obstacle of, uh, you know, so the, uh, sorry, the other thing that I wanted to mention about Mainaka is that this obstacle uh, that Mainaka posed uh, was an obstacle of love, right? It was an obstacle of love. Uh, a loved one is actually facing an ob uh, is posing an obstacle to you, but his intention is not to obstruct you in any way, but he's just offering his love in a way that we feel it's an obstacle, right? So that was the situation in which Hanuman was. But how did Hanuman handle it? He handled it in a mood of love and respect. He won over Mainaka with his love and respect. Very respectfully he explained to Mainaka, he touched him with respect. He said, I touched this mountain peak as, as an acceptance of your invitation and he said he will come back. So like that, when we see an obstacle that is uh, obstacle that is being posed by a loved one, we win over that obstacle with our love and respect that we show back to that person. So next, Anuman flew, he went even further and as he went further, what happened was Surasa rose up in the ocean. Now this Surasa was the mother of the Nagas and she appeared in front of Hanuman as she was sent by the demigods to test Hanuman. 
So she came from the ocean and she appeared in front of Hanuman and she told Hanuman, I'm going to eat you for lunch. She said, the demigods have given you as my food and you cannot go further without entering into my mouth. But Hanuman outwitted her. She opened her mouth and she grew into a huge size. Her mouth grew into a huge size and Hanuman also grew into a huge size. She was growing. Hanuman was growing. She was growing. Hanuman was growing. She grew 10 years now. Hanuman grew 10 years now. She went 30. Hanuman went 40. Like that, they went on and on and on. And suddenly, uh, when uh, Surafat's mouth was so wide open, suddenly Hanuman took a tiny pop and he entered into her mouth and he came out. He said, you told me I must enter your mouth. I entered your mouth and I've come out, so now I will go. Surafat was sent by the demigods, right? And Surata, uh, she started laughing and she said, you're very, very smart, okay? This was a test by demigods and now this came out. So when there is an obstacle posed because of demigods, we win it over with our dedication and steadfastness that we have in the task before us and the intelligence that the Lord has given us. So we must remember, we must be steadfast and dedicated in the task that we have in Krishna consciousness. We have this task. So, we should use our intelligence when there is an obstacle that is posed by the power of demigods. And there is something that is not in our control, you know, that is sent by demigods. At that time, what should be done? We should use our intelligence like Hanuman. And we should be very steadfast in our goal. We should remember what our ultimate goal is. We should not get diverted. We should not get upset. We should not sit down thinking this is not possible. Use your intelligence and win it over with the dedication that you have with the goal in your mind. So, there is another thing also that is explained by Acharya. These are all commentaries by our Acharya. So, I am just uh, talking from that. There is another thing that mm -mm, our Guru Vargas talk about. See, this is very interesting. Hanuman became very big and then he became very small, right? So, first he was competing with Surasa. Surasa opened her mouth, Hanuman also became big. Like that, it went on and on and suddenly Hanuman became very small. He went inside and he came out. So this shows that when we humble ourselves, we can actually overcome obstacles. So Maya is like that Surasa, and she's always testing us, but we cannot grow and inflate our ego. If we keep doing that, we cannot handle Maya like that. We cannot outwit Maya like that. You know, keep inflating our ego. We, are not, we will not be able to uh, win over Maya. So trying to resist this power of Maya is like swimming across an ocean that is there without a shore. Anger, envy, greed, all these are not easy to overcome. But if we become humble and take the shelter of the Lord, understand the devotional service is our focus, take the Lord's shelter, then by the grace of the Lord, everything becomes easy. By the grace of the Lord, this huge ocean actually reduces to the size of a footprint of a cup. So that's why Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu insists on this principle of Krishna consciousness as Prinadati Sunichena. That is the secret formula of success. So we can learn this from the uh, experience that Hanuman had. He was also growing and growing and suddenly he became small. He realized there's no point. If we become small, go inside, come back. Similarly, that's how we handle things. We don't increase our ego. Rather, we become humble and then everything becomes easy. Success in Krishna consciousness becomes easy. So Hanuman reduced to this tiny size. He entered into her mouth. And he won over her because of his intelligence and humility. He was not afraid. Actually, humility is a great strength. If someone is humble, it doesn't mean that they are weak. Uh, Raghunath Maharaj says, humility empowers us with the grace of the Lord. So humility is a big strength. Then Hanuman, after he won over Surata, he got back flying in his car. And suddenly, as he was flying, at one point, he couldn't move. He was stuck. There was a demoness by the name Simhika who saw the flying Hanuman and she caught him. She caught him with his shadow. She was actually a shadow puller. There is a city uh, with which you can catch an object by its shadow. So uh, Sim Simhika had this city. What she did was, when Hanuman was flying, she caught him. It's called a Chayagra. So she caught Hanuman. Um, by his shadow. So she thought, 
After a very long time, I got a very good view. So thinking like that, since he got caught onto the shadow of Hanuman and she started pulling him down. Now Hanuman, feeling that he was pulled down, he was totally confused. He was looking in all directions. He was looking sideways. He was looking up, upside. He was looking downwards. He was seeing everywhere and he could not understand what was happening. Then he saw a big animal-like demon who was rising up in the salty ocean. And Hanuman recognized her because Subriva had told him about her in the past. So Hanuman recognized her correctly as Sangeeta and to win over her, what did he do? He increased the bodily size. He began to increase his size as Sinhika began spreading out her mouth wide. So Sinhika spread out her mouth wide. She was roaring, you know, like a like a huge animal, and she was running towards Hanuman to catch him. But then Hanuman saw her big mouth, which was equal to his body, and praying to Lord Sri Ram with complete surrender. Hanuman whose body is like so nice and it's like a diamond. Anuma's body is so strong. This strong body, he contracted it and fell into her mouth and went inside her body. He went inside her body and offering prayers to the Lord in complete surrender, Hanuman, with the strength that was given to him by the Lord, he tore her internal organs with a sharp nail and then after she was fallen dead, he flew up again that feet. So Sinhika was trying to capture Hanuman by catching on to his shadow. This represents our egoistic tendencies to find fault with others, even with great personalities. Or to speak of people who have faults. Even with great personalities, we try to find faults. So grabbing to the dark side of the shadow, that is no good. Fault finding is no good. What are we trying to do? We are try trying to catch on to the dark side, which is the shadow. That is actually condemnable. So a doctor, he dislikes the disease, but not the person. And a doctor who's like an elevated soul, elevated soul, they try to cure the disease. We may not be able to cure someone's disease, but we should not indulge in fault finding, trying to prove to others that I am better than you and you are very common. So that is a symptom of bloated ego and it is not a symptom of devotee. So Hanuman offered his prayer to Lord Ram and he entered the body and with the mercy of Lord Ram, he tore her past her body and he flew up. So when we face a real detrimental obstacle that, you know, you, your intelligence cannot do anything to you, nothing can do, that's what you do. For things that is beyond our control, maybe because of our karma or because of something unseen, you just cannot do anything. That time we win over by our faith and surrender that we have in the Supreme so at this time, Hanuman was completely surrendered. He said, Lord Ram, you just help me. So he went inside the body and he tore open with a sharp nail. He just tore open the entire internal organ and he came out of the body and it So like that, Hanuman flew up and finally he reached Lanka. So Hanuman, as he was about to land on the beautiful island of Lanka, he was seeing this wonderful island and he reduced his size were very smaller size because the Rakshasas would get very alerted if they saw him in such a big size. So he reduced his size and he entered into the island of Lung. So we will see uh, what happened after that, uh, how he uh, further saw Lankini and then he ultimately got to see Sita Devi and talk to her. So we will see his uh, speaking skills again with Sita Devi and then we'll move further uh, to describe more of his heroism as described as trial of marriage. So thank you very much. Um, any questions or comments? Sorry, I went a little over time. Um, questions, comments, realizations? Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for such a beautiful, such a beautiful class. So beautifully you narrated all the past times of Hanuman. So beautiful. Though you know some of the past times we already yeah. heard in the yeah. other seminar, but still it was so pleasing to the world. Thank you. Thank you so much for all your efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Kirtida Mahaji. Uh, one question, like you were telling about 
the hero agent, right? Like mm. what are the qualities? Mm. And then you were telling one in the charity, one in the religion, and the hero in the battle. Mm. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you quote, right? Yeah. And yeah. then you also said in the mood of personal reciprocation. So what is, can you elaborate upon this problem? Yeah, so that word is in the mood of yeah, so that particular verse is uh, yeah there in the commentary uh, of Sanatan Goswami that he gives. So he talk, he quotes Bharata Muni, and Bharata Muni in his work he says that there are three kinds of heroism. So the hero in charity, hero in religion, and hero in battle. And then Veera, Veera can mean hero in three aspects. Veera can also mean a um, Veera Rasa, that is a mood of personal reciprocation called Veera Rasa or heroism. That means like how uh, Bhishma Dev had this Veera Veera Rasa, right? Yeah, that is what the statement is. Rasa is also to the Rasa, right? Rasa, Rasa. Second Veera Rasa that we can have with the Supreme Lord. Exactly, yes. Yeah, now I got it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Mataji. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Mataji. Agurish Shilpa Pad. Guru Maharaj. Was there somebody else going to say something? Go ahead, Matthew. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I was just thinking. So many. I mean, so many thoughts. So many thoughts were resting in my head as, as you were speaking. It was the first thing I thought of when you were speaking about um, Hanuman getting his boons or getting his benedictions, and I was thinking contrast that and and how empower how empowering it was for him. And then you think of Ravana and everybody else getting all these benedictions and how, uh, what is it, <laughs> useless, <laughs> ultimately they were for them, you know, so, and he didn't ask for these, you know, these were given to him freely, so, and the others were, they asked for these things, so it just sees how, you know, uh, you know, Krishna gives you what you need at the time you need it, you don't need to ask, and it, it just, it's, I mean, I just, uh, a thought that popped into my mind, you know, I don't know how oh, that, it, but it was just <laughs> And also I was thinking of, you know, you know, they say that Ramayana is, you know, Navarasa and it has so many lessons, you know, about how to be a good king, how to be, how to rule, you know, all this stuff. But then just thinking about, you know, Hanuman, the two, the two uh, Leelas or the two uh, episodes that I was hoping you'd speak about was Hanuman, the way, way he spoke, and mm -hmm. also Surya, his, his um, getting uh, instruction by Surya there, and he was touched on both of those, and it was just so exciting. Like Kita Dhamma Pasandari Mataji says, how many times have we heard this Ramayana and it still just excites us. We're just so enthralled with the whole story that, you know, only only the stories of the Supreme Lord can be this enthralling that we can read it over and over and over and over, and over again. And um, one other thought I was thinking, oh, Krishna, I lost it. I'll let somebody else go. If I think of it, I'll tell you. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Thank you. How nicely said. That's so true, Mataji. Thank you so much. Thank you, as usual. Thanks for uh, sharing these realizations. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Preeti Mataji. I know the voice. Shasta Prabhu, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Such nice class I was. I I I'm convinced you're an amazing devotee, but I didn't get to hear your realizations before this. So it was such a treat. I was I was not feeling well, but after your class, I'm ready to go on books now. Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Prabhu, thank you for blessing us, Prabhu, with your presence. It means a lot. Thank you for coming. Yeah, my pleasure. That was such a treat. Like the other mothers you said, you know, Ramayana is everyone's all-time favorite, especially Hanuman growing up in our, you know, childhood. We heard so many stories. Now it's all like um, refreshed from your platform. Thank you. All glories to you. Service. Thank you. Very, very indebted to you, Prabhu. Thank you for coming on the call. Thank you. Jai. Thank you, Prabhu. And take care. Hare Krishna.
शिवरात्री गोपी धनवत प्रणाम कोटी कोटी धनवत प्रणाम केलं प्रभुपाद केलं
prayers and that's why we feel that leela and we uh, pray to shila paupa shri guru dev and guru parampara that please today we are going to uh, do this uh, uh, first time of sri uh, ramayan bhagavatam uh, please help me and whenever i make mistake so this is the meaning uh, hari krishna ganpat pranam shila paupa shri guru dev ki jai thank you mananda gopika mata ji thanks for explaining thank you so much on glory to guru maharaj of course we don't uh, have any qualification and and i mean guru maharaj who speaks and we are just instruments so thank you mata ji thank you for a very nice addition on on the power of the great thank you mata ji that is very much repeat similar to Uh, I know that you are working hard day by day by day by more than two three months for one class. But I just explained from the Sastra Mata Ji. Then what are you? Perfect Mata Ji. Thank you so much. Thank you for explaining that. That is the truth. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Pithi Vila Sri Mata Ji. Thank you. It was a wonderful class as usual, and uh, it was really very interesting. especially when you were talking about the past times of hanuman crossing the ocean uh, i was just thinking although i have heard it uh, before but it was so pleasing to hear it from you and uh, especially the explanation of how the three uh, obstacles relate to us in our devotional life so just now that the little bit of clarification uh, uh, as i don't uh, remember completely uh, the first one refers to when we have uh, um, in my mind ka parvata refers to when we have the disease yeah, we avoid the disease to uh, go on carry forward our devotional service to avoid making a comfort um, and to go beyond our comfort zone and to mm-hmm. do more so that was the first uh, thing that relates to our devotional life right so my mm-hmm. my comfort was the point yes yes that also yeah that and then of course we don't waste time on those trainings and uh, and then what is uh, how we deal with devote uh, people who show us love but then that love is actually an obstacle <laughs> like it's hindering us but we have to respect yeah. their love yeah uh, thank you madam that is a beautiful point as well and then the second one of course uh, it refers to when maya causes us a lot of challenges we become hum and the third one it refers to what the sindhi uh, sindhi ka right So Sivhika was catching onto the shadow. So we should not uh, catch on to the um, and criticize devotee. You know, looking at their faults. It's not a healthy thing, you know, uh, in our devotional service. Uh, like rather, we should, uh, you know, uh, he uh, actually these are all from Maharashtra. <laughs> so I just copy pasted everything. Uh, that is uh, that is one aspect of the uh, thing. And the other aspect is that uh, you know you should always win over a certain situation. which you cannot handle by yourself you know uh, like for example see in the first case uh, it was a sign of love and respect and he spoke nicely with love and he was able to manage the situation that my nasa in the case of uh, the second one what happened was to the ta uh, he had the intelligence at that time to act as intelligent and humility he showed intelligence and humility and he shrunk himself and went inside and came out immediately so that is a sign of you know intelligence But the third one, what happened was he was when he saw that he he really didn't know what to do when she was uh, catching him like that and opening and uh, you know he was her mouth was as, so big as big as a size actually uh, and he didn't know what to do he didn't know whether he could enter and then come out so fast it was a situation it was a problem actually so like that when uh, we uh, when we are into certain situations where there are a problem is beyond our control. At that time, maybe because of our past karma, whatever. Uh, so at that time, you humbly surrender to the Lord, and the Lord will help you out. You know, it's like that. Humbly surrender to the Lord. So he went inside her. Actually, he went inside the body, and then by the mercy of the Lord, he was cut apart and he was out. Okay, very nice, Mr. So there are realizations from who and from what Trinity Trinity did, and also from what Hanuman uh, reacted from that hmm. incident. Right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And also, remembering when you were saying this that uh, uh, Lord Krishna, He says in the Shri Mad Bhagavatam, that when we go through a lot of challenging situations, um, just tolerating it and uh, trusting in Krishna and to surrender Him is the best way to you know show our uh, uh, yes. <laughs> so nice. Yes, Mother. Yeah. 
Thank you, thank you, Saroja Nandini Mataji. Thanks for your addition. Uh, I want to add one more sense, one more point by doing this. That when more and more difficulties came in our life, we become more and more strong in a bhakti, our sadhana, we need uh, sadhu, we get strong as a son of sadhu sandha. Srila Prabhupada Sila Guru Dev Ki Jai. So, Jai. take it positive when the obstacles came in our life. So that's why we become more and more since uh, like Kunti Maharani. Example is Kunti Maharani, Draupadi Rani, Subhadra Rani, Sita Rani, Sada Rani. Mm. So nice, yeah. Yeah. We get more devotee association. <laughs> so much. Thank you. 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 Mother, your this classes are so simple to understand and yet this philosophy is so clearly understood that I really want to like have my kids listen to this because they mm -hmm. give them that understanding and have that inclination to read the scriptures more. So I'm really grateful for you that you found some time and so much of description and the way you were explaining it, it was like we were like small kids sitting in front of you and listening to it. <laughs> it was amazing, Mother, thank you so much. Hi, Bol. Hi, Bol. Sita Preeti Mataji. All glories to Guru Maharaj and all glories to Sanatan Goswami as well. Thank you, Mataji. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna. Preeti Vilasini Mataji. Very beautiful class, Mataji. Very amazing. Nice stories. Very nicely narrated. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mataji. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for giving your very precious association to us. Thank you, Mataji. Shama Gauri Mataji. Thank you, Shabriti. Thank you, Mataji. Hey, I just two more points that I was remembering that I wanted to comment. One was that um, you know, when you were speaking how uh, Mayanaka was giving him, you know, the love, um, and then he said when you're going on some kind of a, some kind of a um, service that would you have a mission, then you should not be delayed. Mm -hmm. And it was just showing in contrast to, um, to Griva, who was delayed when he was given a mission, mm -hmm. whereas Hanuman did not delay. So it just shows the exact contrast between, they're both one of Pobanaras, right? Yeah. So you can't blame, you can't blame, well, it's just this body that I'm in, that's why it's making me do this. No, you have a choice. You have a choice, you know, fear free will, you have a choice. Are you going to do this and be, stay focused on your mission or are you going to be distracted? So I really like that contrast. So many different lessons in the characters of Ramayana um, given. And the other, the other thing, I just love Hanuman, and um, just I just think about Hanuman, and maybe I mentioned this, I can't remember, but just he, you no, know, talking about lessons as far as if we need a lesson on how to be a good speaker, uh -huh. Hanuman is right, you know. Yeah. So that was it. Thank you, Mother. You had to be Yeah, that's true. Hanuman is like a hero for to take lessons from in all the aspects of uh, devotional service, right? Yeah. Yes, that is very true. So many things we can take lessons from Hanuman. Thank you, Master. Yeah, thank you, Parashuri Master, for your beautiful realization. Mm -hmm. You always share with someone like that. Yeah, I was just telling on the lighter note, you know, to Peter Vilasini Master, that. I said the material age is concerned, she is so young, right? But uh, mm -hmm. definitely as for Krishna consciousness, she is much more senior than all of us. Mm -hmm. But as for material age, she is so young and everybody has characterized her as grandma. I just want to show to them, let's show her how she is feeling after <laughs> being, you know, being a grandma. <laughs> That's so sweet. Actually, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I become so happy when everybody, everybody, 
yeah everybody was saying oh we were just listening like small kids and you're just like a grandma <laughs> 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 and you know, this is so sweet. <laughs> yeah, my friend. I feel good to be grandma. <laughs> yeah, and then you know, in the beginning of everything, there's so many details, and uh, although we know it, uh, you know, to give a brief explanation of how it, uh, how the situation is, and where we are, and context. So that takes a lot of patience and a lot of. Uh, details to explain all that to make us comfortable in the situation yeah it's an honorary title of love that we've given you oh how sweet thank you sanjanandri thank you anishal mata ji and speak with us but don't go but don't go on the you know literal meaning of grandma we don't need to say that <laughs> for that old lady <laughs> yeah, and also I should not forget to sleep, like you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a very nice title, Masaji. Thank you. I like it. And all actually, all glory to Guru Maharaj for making me grandma. <laughs> Because of this. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Krishna Mataji. Thank you. Yes, as a 